Okay, so we're done shaping for now. Uh, we've still got a little more to do, but for the most part, it's pretty well shaped. So um, we got it down to where now we can move on to the trigger and uh, make sure the, uh, the lock mechanism is going to work just fine. You can make your own triggers. This is a bot trigger here, but they're pretty easy to make. Uh, you just take a piece of sheet steel and then you put it on your anvil and you start beating it with a ball peen hammer, just really light blows, and it flattens this part out to make a flat trigger. And then you hand shape all this. Uh, a lot of them were very decorative on the back side. This one's a very simple trigger, so we're going to use it, but I like to line it up here. So with your triggers, you want a little rise in them right here. here at the top like the like the trade gun and fowler styles a lot of them are, are rounded at the top and then they just taper back and that's fine but I like cutting a little a little rise in it up here and then flattening this out and putting the sear pretty well right here in this bend right here that just makes a really light trigger pull some guys think it's better back here uh, because uh, you think about leverage uh, where you'd have better leverage back here but it's actually right here is the better leverage and it makes a really light trigger pull so you can actually make a single trigger just as light of a pull as you can as set triggers do if you inlet it properly. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put this thing in here and uh, I'm going to line it up to where that sear is going to be and just kind of eyeball it. All right. And then I'm going to put a mark down here. I'm going to put a mark over here and that tells me where the trigger is going to go. So on Fowlers, a lot of times they would offset the triggers. They would offset it towards the lock. On your, like your other rifle styles, they were pretty well dead center. We're going to put it in the center of the stock here. So I'm just going to draw a straight line across here, a straight line across here, and even that's a little off-centered. If it helps, you can actually draw a center line. I just eyeball it and make it to where it looks good with the rifle. Okay. So next step is, uh, is drilling this thing out. There's a couple ways of doing it. You can drill each hole all the way down just to get rid of wood or you can drill one on each end and then chisel out the rest and and your holes just kind of serves that serves as a stopping point. A lot of guys have trouble keeping it straight so uh, I'm going to try to drill them all the way across but if I start getting off then I'm just going to I'm just going to stop and I'm going to drill them or cut the rest of it by hand. So I'm going to drill in here. All right. I'm just going to keep moving on all the way to the end with these holes. Alright, start chiseling this excess wood out of here. So I need to go in on the back side a little bit more. Okay, so after you have your trigger inlet in there, now you gotta figure out where that hole's gonna be. So what I do is I look down where the sear mortise is and I make sure everything's going to work okay. Seems like it's going to. And then I kind of put a mark in here where I can see where the top of my trigger blade is and I pull it back out. I already have an existing hole here. Getting that to match up is going to be a trick. I'm going to shoot for right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this down. Let's start about right here. I believe that was it. Yeah, I hit the existing hole, so that's good. Just going to try to keep it as straight up and down as I can. 
I'm going to pull it back out. Go ahead and pull that trigger out. Looking good. I'm going to turn this gun sideways. I'm going to go through that same hole. All right. You can take a, uh, a coat hanger if you don't have a bit that's long enough or if your stock is too wide to get that drill bit to go all the way through you can take a coat hanger and and uh, kind of kind of put like a knife edge on it like a like a sharp edge and you can actually cut off a piece about six inches long and put it in your drill and it'll it'll drill through that stock if you only lack like another quarter inch or so to, of getting through you can use a coat hanger just fine Not too bad. I feel a little bit of a little bit of a bind there. It's just barely dragging on something, so I'll I'll figure that out later. So next up is your trigger plate. Uh, I just cut this out of a piece of uh, sheet metal, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna inlet it next. Hitting the trigger plate a little bit. Okay, we'll take care of that. Okay, we're still hitting a little bit. Nope. Take some more metal off this. Okay. To make a trigger right, it's pretty finicky sometimes. Put the frizzing back on in the barrel. Make sure that this thing yeah I mean it's not bad but it's too heavy heavier than I want it to be Pretty close. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, trigger plate still hitting the trigger, so let's do some work on it. But moving on, let's do the uh, side plate next. Lock. Okay, so when you're about to drill your lock plate holes here for your for your lock bolts, you want to drill it. You want to drill through your steel with whatever you're going to tap the threads to be. So. In this case, it's going to be an 832 tap, so we're going to drill through it uh, with this bit here. I believe it's about an eighth inch bit, and uh, we're going to drill through. One, we're going to put one here and one out here on the end. So there's different ways of doing it. Everyone has their own preference. I like to drill through the lock first and then get it through and get it started in the wood and, and get completely through the, the breech plug and then come in from the other side and go ahead and finish the hole out. Just because you can get twisted or something like that as you're drilling. If everything looks good and straight and feels good, then you can go all the way through with it. You can do it on a drill press if you have a drill press. And uh, since we're doing this by hand, then this is going to be the way we're going to do it. So I'm going to cock this back to half cock. I'm going to put a little punch mark right here so I know where I'm drilling at. You want to go just behind the barrel breech there. All right. 
this this locks a little bit different because generally your uh, your bolt will be a little further forward and actually when the cock falls it'll just barely be flush with the with the screw just about but in this case when it falls it's going to go completely over it so we're going to have to make sure that when that bolts in there that we file off the end completely flush so it never hits so we're going to drill away here and you're just you're just drilling through your bolster of your lock up here is all you're doing you just want to make sure in fact i can take it back off real quick and make sure that i'm still good so i'm actually getting towards the end of my bolster here but that's okay as long as you have metal completely surrounding your threads all the way around then you're okay all right we'll get this through there okay so after you have that drilled take that back out and now i'm going to go to a, a bigger bit you just want a bit big enough to where that bolt can pass through it freely without dragging on anything i'm going to drill this completely through the breech plug and uh and through once i get through it i'll come through that needs to be clamped down that's another thing make sure you got everything clamped down snug or otherwise it'll uh, start walking around on you okay we're going to drill through the breech plug here and uh, once I get through, if it's going good, I might just go straight on through with it. If I think it might be angled a little bit or something like that, then I'll flip it around and drill it from the other direction. All right, so we're actually not looking bad at all. We're looking pretty, pretty straight. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill it on through. cool now you can take your lock and put it back in i take my 832 tap this is just uh tap magic oil and i just put some of my tap there and and i come in from this other side get in there and so that way i can make sure that the threads line up whenever uh whenever they go through when you're drilling these you want to be really careful about uh, not applying too much pressure because these taps will they will break on you and then when you break a tap off in your lock plate there then you got some problems I just turn it about a quarter turn at a time and then back it off and just keep repeating that until I'm completely through all right, now that I have it started, pretty good. I'm going to back it back out. <laughs> Just about through. There we go. It's about cleanup time. It's amazing how quick you can make a mess on your table. All I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to countersink that hole just a tiny bit and uh, what that does is it just just a couple turns is all you need but it just helps you uh, helps that bolt guide in there all right can I hit this top just a little bit and I'm gonna cut them slots a little bigger in fact, I'm going to do that right now because I'm, I'm struggling with that thing. All right, that went in there perfect. That's what we want. Cinch her up just a little bit more. So now you can see that our, our bolt is too long. See, so as of right now, if we um, if we cocked it back to full cock and uh, and pulled the trigger, it would uh, it wouldn't go down because it'd, it'd hit that bolt right there. So, but we're not going to cut it off yet because we haven't inlet our side plate yet. So when we get our side plate inlet, then we can put the bolt back through, thread it back in, and then we can know exactly where we need to cut it off at. Because if we cut it off now, then when we inlet our side plate, 
this screw will be a little too short and it'll be inside the lock uh, there just a little ways and it just leaves kind of an ugly hole there so it looks better when they're just flushed out with the face of the lock so that's what we're going to do since i got this bolt in there actually i'm going to go ahead and leave it on half cock and i'm going to do my second hole so what i like to do on my second hole here is um i like to take a pair of these here get my barrel width measurement all right and then i'm gonna lay them up here okay i'm gonna have to drill this hole pretty high to get it to go through where it needs to go which i hate doing that but that's what we're gonna do okay so we're gonna drill this hole tap it just like we did the other one and then next uh we'll inlet the side plate after that okay so i just draw center lines coming out from my holes here if you have a, a side plate like this so this is a i generally make my own side plates but i uh, had this one laying around in the shop so i decided to go ahead and use it on this rifle uh, so if you have one that doesn't have holes already which is actually better because now you can drill your holes wherever they need to be instead of having existing holes from a bought one that you have to make those holes work or or make the holes bigger if you miss your if you miss your spot just a little bit so i just draw center lines coming off the uh, middle of the holes here and then i'll lay it up here and just line that up the best i can so right here we're going to have a hole and right here we're going to have a hole so i'm going to drill those holes out and then um, we're going to inlet the side plate pretty darn close where we need to be so now that you have that back up there I like to take my lock bolts here go ahead and put them in the holes and that'll tell you if everything fits or not so see on this one we're rubbing just a little bit on this edge so what I'm gonna have to do is uh, drill this hole out just a little bit bigger which is okay all right so now they fit so this side plate it's at a little bit of an angle and that's just that's just how this one ended up being so generally you want to try to keep them as straight as you can but if you look at a lot of originals they had to do this exact same thing they had to they had to cant them just a little bit to get them to fit underneath the barrel properly and line up with the lock properly as well so in fact your layout of your side plate is actually pretty important to the layout of your lock plate as well that both of them need to have similarities with each other or otherwise uh, you'll start getting crooked on one of them or on your side plate at least all right got that traced out so now we're gonna uh, score all this and uh, and get the side plate inlet all right we got the side plate inlet and uh she seems like it fits all right so let's um let's put the lock back in make sure everything lines up the way it's supposed to sometimes something can shift or move on you when you're in letting and then it doesn't line up just right so let's give this a whirl and now that we have our side plate in we can also cut these screws off or these bolts off where they need to be okay so now we got this in here so we're going to cut the ends of the bolts off now since we got our side plate in. All right, we're going to have to file that thing off. So let me take the cock back off here. All right, I'm going to file that bolt flush okay yep all that looks good 
side plate's canted a little more than I wanted it to be, but it's actually going to be all right, I think. We're going to go ahead and drill the tang bolt, actually, while we're here. So on the tang bolt, they, um, they also, some builders in the 18th century used the golden mean for even the layout of where their tang bolt was going to go. So they would take a measurement from the breech to the end of the tang here, and then they would divide that measurement by 1.618, and that would give them a measurement. So if you measure off the breech again, it would put you somewhere right in here. It's um, kind of like a third almost, but not quite. I already had an existing mark there when I did the golden mean equation right there for it. So now we're going to drill a hole right there. It's going to be going at a little bit of an angle to hit the trigger plate down here. So you want to go plumb through, hit your trigger plate, go through your trigger plate. Once you drill through here with a bigger bit and you, and you hit your trigger plate down here, you want to stop and switch out to a smaller bit. If you start out with a small bit and go all the way through, you can do that, but then it's kind of harder to get your, your next bit started, especially when you're drilling by hand. It just wants to kind of catch on you. For me, it's easier just to drill with a bigger bit all the way through until I hit my trigger plate, and uh, then I'll change bits and drill through with the 1 8 bit, uh, so that way I can tap it. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so we got the tang bolt in. Everything's fit up the way it should be here. So when you have your tang bolt coming out of your trigger plate here, you want to cut it about an eighth inch above your trigger plate. And I don't really know the reason behind it necessarily. It's just, but if you look at, if you look at the originals, just about every single one of them, the tang bolt is protruding up out of the trigger plate just a little bit, just like that. You can take a little file and um, just kind of knock that off a little bit, just so it doesn't cut you. I think the main reason is just so they could find they could find it easier. If it's a little bit longer bolt, uh, then they're able to find it just a little bit easier. And this is about where it needs to be, except the trigger plate needs to drop down just a little bit more. And so when we get that drop down, we're going to put the trigger guard in. Trigger guard is actually going to be fine without that being dropped in. So when you're putting the trigger guard in, you just kind of look at the, you want to, you want your trigger pretty well center. And if anything, you want maybe a little bit more room in the front of your trigger than the back, uh, just because this is where you got to get your finger in, pull the trigger. So, so we're going to go with about right here. I'm going to take my pencil here and I'm going to put a mark where these lugs are back here, put a mark here. And I'm just going to kind of put a uh, small little mark on the outside of my stock here just to let me know that that's where the outside of those lugs are. Okay. So that's where it's going to be. And now we're going to start inletting the trigger guard in. And uh, as soon as we get the lugs in, then we can, we can inlet the trigger guard itself. Let's see, I'm going to do this one up here first. I'm going to have to bend the trigger guard a little bit. All right, get this sucker inlet. Okay, so next step is inletting the actual trigger guard itself. So I'm gonna trace around the outside of it. It doesn't have to drop in very much at all, just about halfway uh, down, the thickness of the trigger guard is all it needs to go. I'll put a mark out here so I know where the end of that is. All right. Draw that across. Okay. Now I'm going to start in letting this down. All right, trigger guard is in. Generally, you would take this lug off, but this is an old trigger guard that came off a different rifle, and uh, there's not much support on these two. I'm afraid there would be too much play in the middle, so I ended up leaving this extra lug on. It looks kind of ugly because uh, you can still kind of see it, but I would rather I'd rather be able to see something like that than I would have too much play or uh, or something like that or take a chance on bending the trigger guard because there's too much play in there. So, so we're going to leave it. 